So as I, I mentioned, I am a mom and I have um, three girls. They range in age from one year old to eight year old. So this understanding the gut microbiome is not just something that I do um, as a physician, which it is, but it's also very personal to me because I want my children to be set up as best as possible. The first two to three years of life, the microbiome increases in diversity to reflect that of an adult microbiome. The microbiome significantly can develop from breast milk. There are over 700 species of bacteria in breast milk. So I encourage those people who have children or grandchildren that if possible, if um, you can give them breast milk or breastfeed, that's definitely great for their gut microbiome, but also understanding that that might not be possible for everybody. Um, and so really it's most important that the baby is always fed in whatever way possible. We also know that our environment plays a really large role in setting up our microbiome. So children who are in daycare, who have siblings, who have pets, all of those things actually improve and strengthen their gut microbiome. We also know that the microbiome diversity in developed countries like the United States is less than the diversity in underdeveloped countries. So that is um, very surprising for many people because you would think that we have a really good healthcare system and we would then be setting ourselves up for a healthy gut microbiome. But we think that this might be related to the hygiene hypothesis, which basically says that we are being overly and excessively clean and everything is antimicrobial, hand soap, wash, wipes, um, and actually that that early exposure to dirt and different microbes is really important in our development of um, gut microbes. Okay, well, one thing that can also influence our um, gut microbiome are antibiotics. So let's talk about that. In the United States, over 251 million courses of outpatient antibiotics were prescribed in 2019. At least 28% of antibiotics prescribed in the outpatient setting are unnecessary. So it's really important that you talk with your doctor about the need for an antibiotic. I definitely think there are certain situations where we need to take antibiotics. If you have a bacterial infection, then antibiotics can be life-saving. But what's happening is that we're seeing a lot of patients get antibiotics for viral infections or for other issues that ne don't necessarily need it. An average American gets about 30 courses of antibiotics before the age of 40. And a lot of it is, okay, one, some patients are getting it because they're overusing it. But also, and really importantly, if we are consuming non-organic meat, fish, milk, eggs, even our tap water, actually, all of these things have antibiotics. 80% of all antibiotics sold or distributed in the United States are used for commercially farmed animals. So if you think about that, if 80% of all antibiotics, that means millions of courses of antibiotics are being used for animals. And if people are eating the milk, eggs, meat, and those animal products, where do you think those antibiotics are going? Those antibiotics are going in our body. They're affecting our gut microbiome. We know that even a short course of antibiotics will change our gut microbiome. One course of antibiotics will produce antibiotic resistant bacteria in the gut. We know that. We also know that the gut microbiome with time can definitely heal and get better, but it does play a role. It's going to impact our gut microbiome. Okay, so we talked about uh, mode of delivery, we talked about early life exposure, we talked about antibiotics. So a huge thing that impacts our gut microbiome and our mood is food. Um, we have likely all been there, I know I have, where we have overindulged, we have overeaten, we have eaten too many sweets, maybe we've drank too much, and we've all felt that effect and that feeling of being in a food coma, 
uh, feeling ill, of uh, just not feeling well that can result from that. So that is an example of what we what happens on an extreme way. But just remember, you know, we are eating so much food every single day and that that impacts our gut microbiome and our mood. And we are going to talk a lot about food a little bit later. So we'll come back to that. I just want to go back to our GI tract for a second. One thing that people don't realize about our GI system is that our GI tract is the largest endocrine organ. It secretes more than two dozen different hormones. So when I have patients who come in and have hormone imbalance, one of the things that we need to think about is how's your gut microbiome? Why are you getting all these imbalances? Because the GI tract plays a role in that. We also know that many of these hormones are imbalanced and altered in patients with irritable bowel syndrome. The immune system and the endocrine system impact irritable bowel. The hypothalamic pituitary axis in the brain influences the GI tract through corticotropin releasing factor, CRF. We know that there's elevated CRF during periods of stress. And we also know there's elevated CRF in depression. And what we see during periods of stress um, and anxiety and depression is that we get increased inflammation. And in turn, that causes increased pain sensation and more pain in patients with IBS. So we know that life stressors, psychiatric illnesses, um, anxiety, depression, impact our immune system. They can create dysmotility, abnormal movement in our GI tract. They can cause increased sensation, different types of secretions. All of this can impact our gut. It can result in low grade inflammation, immune dysfunction. And then all of this in turn will also impact our gut microbiome. And these kind of all impact each other. They keep cycling back and forth. Don't worry, be happy. So many of you have heard of serotonin. Serotonin is the key hormone for mood and happiness. 95% of serotonin is synthesized and made in the gut. We know that serotonin has a role in the GI tract. It activates nerve fibers and impacts the nervous system. And it also impacts colonic motility and secretion, meaning it has an impact on whether we are going to have diarrhea or constipation and how quickly or slowly things are going to move through our GI tract. The co-occurrence of IBS and an altered GI tract and depression is estimated to be about 30%. In addition to a hyperactive stress axis, endocrine signaling and hormonal regulation are altered in patients with IBS. So this was a study actually looking to see um, what is going on with the gut, gut bacteria in patients who have depression. This was a large microbiome population study. They looked at over 2000 people and gut bacteria were studied as it relates to depression. And really what I'm showing here is that they found different specific strains that were higher in patients who were less likely to have depression. And then they had found more harmful strains of gut bacteria in those patients who were more likely to have depression. So this is really early research and it's not yet something that we can clinically apply yet, but there's a lot of research coming out showing that different gut microbiome strains are gonna be related to anxiety and depression. So this was a really interesting study. It was done several years ago and it was actually looking to see, can you transfer emotions like anxiety in stool transplants and fecal transplants? So what they did were, um, what they did was they took stool from anxious people and then they took stool from very happy, relaxed people. And they took those stool and they put them in germ-free mice. So these are healthy mice, they, didn't, they don't have their microbiome, they have the exact same environment conditions, same food and same everything. And then they studied the mice later to see what was happening with the mice. And they found that those mice that got the stool samples from the anxious people, those mice became anxious as well. And uh, conversely, those mice that had um, stool from really happy, healthy people, they had normal mouse behavior. So this was a really great study that actually shows that you can transfer emotions, anxiety, happiness, depression, 
um, all through stool transplants. And it just highlights how important our stool is and our gut microbiome is in our mood. <music>